Sparring's over. Tonight, a primetime showdown. It's best two out of three. Stacy Ottman, there's the first start. And as Anthony tries to advance inside, Bobby Phils knocks him down. Rick Anthony gets up, and immediately, Jimmy Iron off the Blazers bench, keeping an eye on Greg Anthony. Make sure he doesn't get tossed out of here. As Phil's frustrated by the pick, shoved Anthony on his way up when he was off balance. Uh, it was a hard steal. He got him across the arm, was able to get in, and on the way in, a little court shot by Anthony, and uh, it was a retaliation hit and pushed by Bobby Phil's, and Anthony reacted. You know, they're still talking to each other. Now you watch, Anthony's coming in, I watch his arm go out. Now he gives him a good shot. And so the reaction by Phil's is, I'm not going to take that poor shot without laying some wood myself. And then Anthony's back at it. But uh, Anthony is the aggressor. And, the, and, you know, this is the way you play offense. This is how you get separation. This is how you keep people off of you. Well, the officials are trying to sort it out. While we have been watching that little replay there, the, uh, the two fellas, the principals, have been jawing at each other some more. And so now the Blazers pull each other away and go over and talk to one another on the side. Who's Jordan? Hard foul from Anthony. So it looks like New York has it. Uh-uh. Speed and quickness. Michael Jordan. There's the foul. Michael wanted to go to him. He said, no, nope, I got to leave that alone. Too many years playing against the Pistons. You know you just wake up. Make your free throws and get down the floor. You got to leave that kind of distraction alone. Scattered during that little run by Chicago. Anthony fouled hard by Horace Grant. And Anthony having trouble dribbling the ball tonight. He lost his dribble three times. He's got to calm down a little bit. You know, I mean, he gets, it's one thing about being competitive. When you're a point guard, you must set the tone for your team. And if you get excited, your team's going to get excited. Horace Grant took the foul there. They had one to give in the last two minutes. It was intelligent move. Right. Cordy's been able to handle the ball. Now Pippen jumps out and has called for the foul. Greg Anthony, a very confident young man for a first-year player. He was just screaming in the face, first of Pippen, and then Jordan. Now, earlier in the season, he got involved with, with Michael Jordan. Jordan did not care for the uh, manner in which he was fouled by, by Anthony, and they went at each other. I mentioned a moment ago, Greg Anthony and uh, Haywood Workman going at each other. This was the fourth and final game of the regular season between these the two clubs now watch this a little shove wrestling match but a different story here this afternoon Edward Workman making certain that Greg Anthony was okay well I thought underneath the basket he was just asking if he was yes. okay <laughs> actually that uh, other melee precipitated by an accidental L Marcus Camby no surprise there but Danny Ferry also got suspended for this ugly incident on Monday. Well, the play seemed to start innocently enough. Danny does catch Marcus with the backside of his hand, but then Marcus just completely loses it. Suspensions, as you said, five-game suspension and $25,000 fine for Marcus Camby. Surprisingly to me, a one-game suspension, $7,500 fine for Danny Ferry. You'll never convince me if Marcus doesn't lose his head and get over there and end up headbutting with Jeff Van Gundy. Danny Ferry would not have been suspended or fined. A little hard to accept. I guess the league felt they had to do something. We caught up with him, and he talked about that one-game suspension. I disagree with it. You know, I don't think it, the suspension was a fine or warranted. Uh, you know, I uh, don't really feel that I did anything to warrant 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 it, and you know, it's unfortunate. I'm I'm very frustrated right now, but I think the best thing right now is to do the interview with you guys, and uh, for my sake, for the team's sake, everything just kind of move on. Good attitude. Just move on after this one game suspension. Seventy to fifty-seven. And Drexler turns it over on his own offensive foul. They're really looking for the elbow. Uh, if you look at it this way, that foul committed by Burkowski, either way, either with a basket or a foul in that situation, it just made him mad. And now they're coming back even stronger and have the crowd in this game. That's four on Clyde Drexler. Not surprising that they're calling all oh. in this game. And now Andrew 
Anderson and Drexler separated by Mike Masters. Drexler's gone. He's gone. He threw an elbow at Willie Anderson. Anderson and him got in it. Drexler threw an elbow to his head. I guarantee you Drexler is gone. Well, we're going to see what happens. And Mike Mathis explaining his decision to Clyde Drexler, and it looks like he has been ejected. Watch what happens. There you see Willie trying to find out. There you see the forearm to the head right there. Willie tries to respond. Tell you what, if Clyde could see what we just saw, he wouldn't be arguing. That's a very clear-cut flagrant elbow, and I was about to say, not, not surprising that they're looking for the elbows with Daryl Garrison, head of NBA officiating, on this crew, so out goes Drexler. Four points on one of ten from the field. Seven assists, six rebounds after his 35-point, nine assist, eight rebound effort in game five. And to Willie Anderson's credit, he didn't respond in kind, or the Spurs would have been out without Willie for the rest of the game. Portland without its biggest weapon. They're asking what happened to Clyde Drexler. He has been ejected with 3-0-1 to play in the third quarter, and here is why. Watch just inside here between Cummings and Williams area. There you see the elbow first by Willie Anderson. Not much there, but that retaliation, a forearm to the head connected with the elbow to the face of Willie Anderson is what got Clyde Drexler a chance to rest up for a possible Game 7. And it doesn't take two tees to get ejected if you throw the elbow. That's how you can be tossed on your first and in this case last tee and Willie with 19 points his first since earlier in this series we saw just how explosive the mix in Seattle can be Carl and Gary Payton in a heated exchange that stemmed from what Payton saw as a lack of playing time generally you can say Hey Gary, you know you gotta understand. We're in the playoffs. You don't you don't get you don't get pissed off about minutes, <laughs> but but they do. And I like players who want to play. I want players who I, that anger is okay in my locker room. Me and him, we were like that. That's what happened. It just happened. I'm getting the next day. I don't you don't see me going yelling back at him, and we got a we got a beef because we don't. You can dislike the coach as long as you play for him. You know, if Gary and George have the arguments, fine. Have your argument, then I'm going to take Gary to the side and say this, 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 this and that, and let's go. You know, the bottom line is to win. And, and that's what George wants to do. That's what you want to do, Gary. That's what I want to do. The ultimate bottom line is this. Despite whatever friction may exist on this team, or maybe because of it, the Sonics are just one game away from the Western Conference Finals. Here's who has 14 points in this first half. 11 and 7 tenth seconds to go in the half. Indiana by three. Hopper does not like the hand checking by Miller. You can see on the inbounds, Hopper upset with Miller. Pressure by Eric Harper picking up Reggie Miller, holding him and following what he's supposed to do, but nobody really shows up. And Derek Harper in a foul mood right here. And Reggie Miller on this ensuing inbound play, a little touching. Derek Harper trying to knock it off, doesn't like it, although the pressure by Miller is not that hard. Harper is still upset the fact that Reggie curled on him and got that lay-in, and as these two part, going to the locker room for halftime, they have some nasty words for each yes, other. Yes, and earlier Charles Oakley and Antonio Davis got involved. Let's go to Ahmad with Indiana coach Larry Brown. All right. So the Pacers now lead by four. to talk as they were coming down to that end of the floor and Reggie Miller really was working Harper over getting open and putting up the shot as Harper once again tries to challenge that shot that clearly catches Reggie Miller on the right hip and you can't be putting a normal 91% free throw shooter on the line as they're kind of smiling and who knows what they're saying at this particular point it was nasty at the end of the first half this looks like it's a, a good nature right now but you don't want to be fooling with this stuff 
Who knows what the officials are going to call? You don't want it in a close ball game. You don't want to give up an extra free throw with a technical foul for Tony. Wolfman out of the pack, leading Miller. And Miller fouled by Hopper. And they have words. Miller immediately kept away by Antonio Davis. And let's see what the call is. It is a personal foul. Number five on Hopper, the Pacers, calling for a flagrant. Well, Reggie Miller going in. Derek Harper is actually going to get both hands on this basketball. He hit the top of the head of Reggie Miller, and that's where the foul occurred. But Derek Harper does try to play the ball here, and that's why the officials did not call a flagrant foul. Reggie Miller spending much time at the line. 13 of 15 from the foul line. And now Harper and Workman who had some testy moments in the final game between these two clubs during the regular season are chatting away. So things have picked up. This was a very quiet series up until today as the Pacers try to tie the series at two. Reggie Miller hits the free throw and then stares at Derek Hoffman. Indiana leads by seven. 2-20. team and Williams is clobbered. Scott Williams upset. A very hard foul. Great ability to elevate and find open teammates and yes, as you said, a very hard foul. Well, yeah, Dell's going to give all the referees a T, a technical. He, of course, would get his own as the Chicago Bulls would go on to down the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks have been playing great basketball. Can't figure out the... The bounce pass to Vernon! Rebounded and running. And then Coleman is going to be hammered and takes a swing at, Cole, at Purdue. He should be out of here. He should be thrown out of the game for that. There's the technical. And if the right guy here doesn't make that call, Steve Gabby, he should be making that call. What Derek Coleman did, that was unnecessary. We don't need that in this league. And Johnny Davis, as much as I like him, does not have a beef. Somebody's going to get tossed here. Avery Johnson has a good point if Steve Gabby doesn't make this call. Now, Will did not back down. Will Purdue started that fast break to Dominique. He throws the bounce pass to Vernon at the other end. And here's Coleman taking it hard into Will Purdue. Good foul. There's the swing. Well, I, I just I'm just amazed that he wasn't tossed. You know, and he wonders why people talk and don't say great things about him all the time. Well, that's one of the reasons why. So you got to figure you're going to get a hard foul. That oh, yeah, was a exactly. completely clean hard foul from over the top. He wasn't under him. He was on top of him. And you don't want to give him a chance to make the shot. Well, they're giving technicals to both Will and Coleman. That's unbelievable. I could see a double foul, but double technicals for swinging at him. And now Coleman trying to egg on the crowd. That's a class act. Here's Will Purdue with the block. Incidental contact after the foul. He just had his hand there. And that was a swing. And Coleman waving at the crowd. Now the Spurs, the only way they can really answer this is just by beating them. Just play basketball.